Hi, the player to welcome you to another episode of 60 Minutes with Professionals. This is our second episode. And, um, you know, I, we have gotten a lot of feedbacks from some people that participated in the last one that I made in addition. And uh, it's been a very interesting one. Till Tuesday or Wednesday, we are still getting questions here and there. Some of those questions we're going to respond to today. At the same time, we have we have a fantastic program lined up for you today. Uh, today we'll be discussing about the uh, catalytic converter in a vehicle. You know, a lot of people have this story that okay, their catalytic converter has been removed. The vehicle now makes more noise, now consume more force. Today, you're going to ha have an answer to all those questions. You know, we're going to expose it to you and. At the same time, let you know the implication of a, a bad catalyst in a vehicle. And we have ample time to answer your questions. So now that we've started, if you're watching us on, uh, on Facebook or you're watching us on uh, YouTube, just join us and send, send your questions ahead of time so that the moment we finish the, uh, the first session, we can start from there immediately. With me today, again, I have uh, Patrick Alagia. Um, uh, he was here last week, and we will be discussing together. We will be asking, we will be answering your questions together. So, Sir Patrick, can you say hi to our viewers? Yeah, Mr. Patrick, can you can you hear me? Can you please say hi to our viewers at home? Okay, okay. Anyway, we I think it's as a result of the uh, bad network signal, and uh, so. We will proceed to the program of today. Uh, I'll be discussing the catalytic converter of a vehicle. Yeah, this catalytic converter. This is catalytic converter vehicle. And, um, you know, some of us, I know, will have come across it at different times. Uh, and maybe when we go to our technician, and uh, some have told us that, oh, your, your catalytic converter is no longer there. Or probably you ended up discovering that some, somebody somewhere has cut off your catalyst and removed something from it, and you discover that your vehicle now consumed. Well, so this is just uh, a picture picture of what a catalytic converter actually looks like. And I will just share with us the basic thing a catalyst does in a vehicle. Um, you know, what catalyst does in a vehicle is basically dealing with harmful compound that, um, that we come across in our engine. You know, because the engine works at a very high temperature, you know, so it releases some harmful compound, you know, like the hydrocarbons, the carbon monoxide, the nitrogen oxide. So, you know, the hydrocarbon is as a result of the unborn fuel, you know, that find their way from the engine to the exhaust. The carbon monoxide, they are as a result of the combustion of the gasoline in our engine. Then the nitrogen oxide, you know, they were created by the heat in the engine forces, the nitrogen in the air to combine together with the oxygen. So what does a catalytic converter does is basically convert this hydrocarbon, the carbon monoxide and the nitrogen oxide to a, an harmless compound like the carbon dioxide like water, like um, nitrogen and oxygen, which can be easily released to the atmosphere. And, you know, we are sure that all of us are safe. 
So that's what the catalyst does basically. And uh, you know, at times you have seen check engine lights on our engine and the diagnosis and say, okay, is your catalyst that is bad? What could have caused this? All that is part of the things we'll be discussing today. But if you could see from uh, the, the picture we are showing on the screen now, you see that the catalyst is made of uh, stainless steel. Understand? But right inside of it, in the form of muffler, we have the catalyst, catalytic converter itself. You understand? So the catalytic active materials include the aluminum aluminum oxide, the xenon oxide, and some rare earth stabilizers, metals like gladinium. Like, so, you know, the cerium, the ceramic curves inside the uh, catalytic structure, these are the, the, uh, the compound that you react. You understand? The first thing that happens when, uh, when the ampoule compound enters into the catalytic converter is to first deal with the, um, the carbon monoxide. You understand? It deal with the carbon monoxide and with the hydrocarbons and uh, with the nitrogen oxide before it's released at the tailpipe the h2o the co2 and the and the nitrogen so um why we uh, dealing with is internet at its end so I will want him to just basically make some contributions as regards the, the catalyst. Yeah, Mr. Patrick, welcome back. I could see that, that, I, that you are facing some issues with your internet. So let's maximize the time while you're here. Yeah. Thank you, Tokwe. Um, it's the internet has been very, very bad. Yeah. True. True. Okay. All right, um, good evening viewers once again. I hope I am a bit audible now. Yes, very well. Am we can, I, hear you. can somebody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Am I audible? Or can I go ahead? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Please. Can I go ahead? Can somebody yeah. hear me? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please. Okay. Yeah, can somebody hear me? Am I audible? We can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, if you can hear me, let me briefly talk about the catalytic converter. Um, we all know that having a vehicle helps to make things easy. Yeah, you can hear me. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I said we all know that have having a vehicle, having an auto, some things as a necessity. It is a luxury or it is a necessity. We still need to make sure we operate our vehicle, our automobile, in such a way that it doesn't become dangerous to us and to the people around, doesn't destroy our atmosphere. So one of the reasons, one of the things that oh. yeah, I think the the internet issue is um it's uh, taking a serious toll on our program today. So um let's uh, let's just proceed. Okay. Go. I, I think well, I'm back. So one of the yes, things that the manufacturers have done is to add some components in the engine, in the engine to reduce the effect of um, 
to to reduce the effect of emission you know yes so the light of the oxygen sensor started and all other minor minor sensors before the advent of the catalytic converter in i think in 1975 now in 1975, the catalytic converter started as a two-way catalyst, where action, um, monoxide, and the hydrocarbon into carbon dioxide and water. These are, um, these are, um, it actually helps to do what, to do that conversion so that um, the, the, the gases coming out will not be pollutants to the atmosphere. So that's what it does. But in 1981 upward, for most um, IC engine, they now um, changed it from, they moved from the, okay, okay. Yeah, proceed, proceed, proceed. All right. So, so, um, so they now converted from the two-way catalytic converter to the three-way catalytic converter. You know, right from 1981 upward. But up till date, there are still some vehicles that uses the two-way catalyst. These are lean-born engines. Some lean-born engines still uses the two-way catalyst as their catalytic converter. When it was two ways catalyst, it is just the hydro uh, hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide. But now with the three-way catalyst, you have the hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide, and the nitrogen oxide. So that's what you have for the three-way catalyst. For most vehicles you see around today, it is the three-way catalyst that you can you find in them. You know, and looking at the catalyst itself, it is a very it's it's a very 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 expensive um, um component in the vehicle because it does so much work it may look so small but it does so much work if you look at the it's um the casing is a steel the steel casing the body is steel because of the high temperature that's of um exhaust fume that is going through it Sometimes it get it gets up to two thousand five hundred degrees Fahrenheit, you know, and then anything above that will form NOx. So that's the reason why sometimes for some vehicle, aside from the fact that you have your catalytic converter, you still have what they call your EGR. We will not go into that. The EGR helps to helps the catalytic converter to work better because sometimes when the NOx formation is high, it may be difficult for the cat to to hold it. So what the EGR now does is that it helps to recirculate back um, some of the exhaust um, um, some of the exhaust um, um, fume back, back to the engine, so as to reduce the temperature in that catalytic converter, so that NOx will not be formed. So in this case, with our catalytic converter, at a point. In, in Lagos, in Nigeria, um, if you take your vehicle down to any workshop, any mechanic, in fact, sometimes when you're importing vehicle, uh, once the vehicle gets to the port like this, what they do is that they'll remove the catalytic converter because of the, the, the components that is used, the materials, the active materials that is used in um, 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 producing the catalytic converter. So we've had so many cases with so many bad experiences with our catalytic converter. In fact, in the police station, at some point, we have a separate cell for catalyst offenders. You know, so um, this is just a brief history of the catalytic converter. So we have it in our vehicles, and um, because it's it's something that is expensive, and the components, the active materials that is used in producing the catalytic converter. If you're not careful, 
most times you take your vehicle to a mechanic workshop or a panel beta you see them they will, within 10 20 minutes they have removed the catalytic converter you will not know they'll go and sell it some time what they do is that they they, um, they will now put something inside that um, that catalyst um, manifold so that you will know that it has been removed because if it is fully empty the engine or the engine will be making a very loud noise so it's for you to drive a vehicle that does not have catalytic converter today for some vehicles i can tell you categorically for some vehicle if the catalytic, con catalytic converter is not there it damages the engine you see the engine size smoking and then um, besides the fact that there are other symptoms like um, excess fuel consumption and so you 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 still discover the uh, you, you you still find out that the engine will get damaged because the catalytic converter is not there wow that is very interesting so um you know on the catalytic converter we also have the oxygen sensor i want us to discuss about oxygen sensor there are some vehicles that also have another sensor on the catalyst that people will be thinking that no it's only oxygen sensor and we have a uh, sensor too af sensors also on your exhaust system generally can you throw more light on them on that okay. yes okay yes uh, okay all right um with from experience a lot of vehicle owners that have actually scanned their vehicle will tell you that they know about oxygen sensor but sometimes when there's check engine lights on their on their instrument cluster what they'll do is that they'll just tell you that i know what the problem is it is the oxygen sensor in most cases, it might not even be the oxygen sensor, but I know that many vehicle users, they, uh, they've had the experience and they, they understand and they know what oxygen sensor is. Now, let me explain the, the oxygen sensor that we have. Yes, the, the AF sensor is still an oxygen sensor, but it's a wide band oxygen sensor, you know? So it is actually does any, band, any sensor, one oxygen sensor is known as AF sensor. It's almost the same thing like the, the other one. So I would, what is sensor one? Sensor one is known as um, the upstream oxygen sensor. Why sensor two is the downstream? That's the one that is before the catalyst. Then you now have one after the catalyst. So if you have a, a four-cylinder inline engine or any inline engine that has one exhaust manifold, you have two, catalyst, two um, oxygen sensors. The first one, which is the sensor one, or the upstream oxygen sensor is actually known as your AF sensor. It is called F well ratio sensor. While the second one, which is the sensor two, on that same exhaust manifold, is known as your um, downstream oxygen sensor. You know. So, what the um, while if you have a V V engine that has two exhaust manifold, twin exhaust manifold. In some cases, you have four um, catalytic converter, four catalysts. In some cases, you have just three, two to the engine, to the to the um, to the um, engine manifold, then one at the middle. But in some cases, you have four catalytic converter. Whether you have four catalytic converter or you have three, for most V engines, you have four oxygen sensors because you have two banks, bank one and bank two. Bank one will have bank one sensor one bank one sensor two then bank two also have bank one bank two sensor one and bank two sensor two so all sensor ones they are all they are known as af sensor now if the af sensor is defective okay what does it do let me even explain what what it does now if you look at it when if you look at um the the way the engine management electro electronics works is that when you start your engine and then um, the 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 cycle continues from your four stroke cycle i don't want to go into that you know now the what the oxygen sensor actually does is that it measures the quantity of oxygen in that exhaust gas that is coming now because the 
ratio of the the the, the, the ratio of air to fuel has to meet the lambda value what is a lambda value a lambda value is actually known as the stoichiometric value of that engine so every petrol engine runs at 14.7 air to one fuel now but if there is a problem with some sensors maybe one of the plugs is not performing well you know maybe there's a misfire maybe one of the injectors is not working well then the system the the mixture will not be okay it's going to either run on rich or on lean so what the ecu the, the the brain box wanted to know what is happening in the combustion chamber that is the reason why the the that's why you have your sensor one which is your af sensor the f well ratio sensor so by the time before it goes into the catalytic converter because that is what is actually coming out now the air sensor now senses what is the what is the quantity of air is it more than the fuel if it is more than the fuel it sends the signal to the brain box that oh we have more more oxygen more air in this system as compared to the fuel in the system then the the brain box will now use that to correct the mixture you know and at the same time if you have less fuel and more air in the system the the brain box does the same thing you know the oxygen sensor sends this the the, the the information to the brain box and tells the brain box oh we have more more air in the system than fuel so we are not going to get get to that lambda value that is what the AF sensor does. So it is very um, dangerous for your AF sensor to be defective. Some people will tell you, I've been driving my car for a very long time and I went to scan it. They told me, ah, it is my oxygen sensors are bad, but there is no problem. If your oxygen sensor is bad, there is a serious problem. Your vehicle will be running rich, consuming more fuel. Fuel will be fuel that is supposed to be completely burnt. A lot of them will go back to the crankcase, wash off the cylinder wall. It will reduce the lifespan of the end. It, it does so many bad things if your AF sensor is bad. So the two oxygen sensor, bank one, uh, sensor one and sensor two, although they are oxygen sensors, but one is known as F well um, ratio sensor, you know, because it has a wide band. So the sensor one or the upstream, the one before the cats, with the one before the catalyst is actually known as your AF sensor, F well ratio sensor. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Patrick. You have really done justice to, to that. Before we proceed, I just want to remind you, if you have any question, whether around what we are discussing today or probably any other um, issues you are, going, you are having with your car that you just need some explanation uh, from the professionals, then uh, just put it in the uh, comment section, whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook. Just put your question down there and uh, let's respond to it. So in the next five minutes before we go into the, the questions, um, why is it that vehicle users just discover that there's nothing inside their catalytic converter again? Because it's now common. You know, it's common is what we have experienced uh, uh, in the course of our work. Uh, we just see that a car that you we believe because catalytic converter actually have a lifespan. Some manufacturers we even give you up to ten years warranty on it. But how come a vehicle that is less than three years and you can't find any cat uh, catalytic converter inside again? And we discover that people actually cut them out. So what is the implication of this? Why do you think people could be removing it? And, um, and what, what, what can you advise a viewer as far as that is concerned? All right. Hello, Thank Mr. you very much. Now, um, like I said earlier, the issue of catalyst or catalytic converter has been going on. Catalytic converter theft has been going on in Nigeria for over 10 years now. 
sometimes when you go to the police station in fact the people that are in cell out of in the, like like seven eight years ago out of 15 boys that you see in this particular cell 10 of them would be catalytic converter theft offender so it's it, it's a problem it is because of what is there in fact they gave it a name they'll tell you it's indomie some they'll say it's spaghetti they'll say it's a way now a customer will bring a vehicle to your workshop to fix and the, the, the next thing they'll do is that they'll give them somebody will go underneath and see it. The, the customer actually came to the workshop for something somebody will just go underneath and do what and see if the cat is still there the customer is there available is to cut out that catalytic converter because there is gold inside and some other things so people use it they use it to manufacture bullets a lot of people are coming to buy it so the thing is this what they now do is this they'll take it off and they they, they put wire gauze inside they stuff wire gauze inside i've seen situations where the software goes into so some of the is the um, um, catalytic converter container the housing and then it's damaged the engine in fact i i on a toyota camry a v6 toyota camry started moving towards um the end of the manifold anymore so the implication here your engine will be consuming more fuel than normal because the 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 post catalyst because we have like i said the pre-catalyst and the post catalyst sensor mm -hmm. now what the post catalyst sensor does is that by the time the the cat the catalyst has done the oxidation and reduction reaction on the nitrogen um, oxide the hydrocarbon and the carbon monoxide you know then it is the duty of the oxygen sensor to now read the mixture contents and relate the information back to the brain box now but if the catalyst is not there or they put something else that is not actually doing the job of a catalyst now the brain box will really the the the, the information the brain box will be getting as to the mixture quality that is coming out will be um will be defective so because of that the brain box will not know what to do it will go into what they call like a default mode you know it will start dumping fuel into the system just to keep the engine running because it doesn't know what the the is not really getting a very good information because the cats had been removed so it is very very dangerous for you to drive a vehicle that the catalytic converter has been removed i can tell you for sure 85 percent of vehicle that comes from kotonu that you ask someone to go and buy in fact we have people there in kotonu today that left nigeria they are they are they are they, they, they are stationed in kotonu where they sell car their job is just to remove catalytic, any catalytic converter before they will, they will start bringing them into nigeria so more than 80 percent of vehicles bought from kotonu doesn't have catalytic converter and it is not really good aside the fact that it will affect the engine affect the performance of the engine you know it will reduce the lifespan of the engine it will um affect the poor consumption at the same time it will still affect your zone layer destroy human i mean uh, the health of uh, people around so it is very very dangerous um for you to drive a car as as far as today is concerned that does not have a catalytic converter wow that is uh <laughs> that's very interesting the one of the mistakes that uh, our people also make is that they they don't really uh you know put attention to what is happening in their vehicles you understand the uh sudden fuel consumption then increase in the noise of the vehicle that you just discover that the vehicle now make uh uh more noise now 
is it only is it only when people remove the catalyst that a vehicle faces a uh, problem because we have had this case too um I, I want us to discuss it for the benefit of our viewers that the catalyst was not removed but the catalyst broke inside the system and it blocked the the pipe you understand so making the um the odds air coming in from the engine you understand that's supposed to pass through it to be going back to the engine we have experienced we have had this experience where uh, a car almost got burned as a result of that from experience too we have discovered that it could even cause uh, a complete damage to your engine so uh, Patrick, what what's your view about that what should okay. people look out for when they begin to notice uh, all these kind of changes in their car provided the catalyst is still in in the system all right so thank you very much so what i want to advise is that um for the fact that you are driving a vehicle that is obd compliant i always advise that this once maybe once in two months once in three months have your car scanned even if you think there is no problem it is always good for you to take your vehicle to a workshop that you know that is well equipped you may actually you may just go for just oil change and um if you are i'm sorry to divert to i'm sorry to divert to this um what i'm saying now yeah. So if you are a, a customer, even if you you actually come into the workshop for oil change, they will take the they will, the as part of what they do in the standard workshop is to do some multi point um, inspection for you. So they will they will they will diagnose the vehicle and see if there are any trouble codes relating to your your catalyst. It is very important. The catalyst may still be there, but it would have deteriorated in the sense that um the catalyst could either get clogged it is there it will get clogged that all those tiny tiny orifices inside the catalyst that allows the the, the, the hot air to pass you know it will just get blocked then the air the hot air will not the hot gases that should have gone out from the cat from the cat will not be able to be returning back in fact in most cases what what one of the symptoms you you discover is that you just discover that your, your your engine has lost power you are accelerating it's not accelerating well you think it's fuel pump you replace fuel pump it's still the same thing you know so one of the ways to know that is that when you try to rev it to accelerate let somebody check the exhaust to see if the exhaust is true if the exhaust is not true what happens is that if the vehicle well the engine will not perform very well it will lose power sometimes you want to climb a hill you won't be able to go you want to overtake it won't overtake at idle you rev sometimes it won't go above three two thousand five hundred rpm so now when it is blocked like that when it is blocked like that right now because it is not allowing the hot um exhaust gas to go out remember i said it is burning up to 2500 degrees fahrenheit it stays inside and returns back to the engine one of the things you notice is that the engine block in most cases you see it becomes so red if it is pure cast iron it will become so red it causes serious damage to the engine it can even burn the whole vehicle entire entire vehicle so besides the fact that if if besides the fact that they remove catalytic converter you know and then um, if the, the, it becomes empty they work sometimes they work pipe there they work wire goes inside just to reduce the noise coming out from that exhaust you know the catalyst could still be there and combat due to certain um, reasons number one if you're before uh, before the expiration of the of the lifespan sometime manufacturers mm. can give up to 10 years warranty which means that the catalyst should be able to last up to 15 years now but if you are driving your vehicle and um, there is constant misfiring probably when your plugs are bad you're managing it the cylinder is misfiring you're damaging your catalyst very 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 important so so in most cases, when you diagnose, if the catalyst is broken or if it is clogged, it will not be performing, it won't be as active as it should be. So when you scan it, you get a trouble code. I think P0420, P0430, catalyst efficiency below threshold. When you get catalyst efficiency below threshold, it tells you that it is either there is no catalyst inside 
the 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 there is no catalyst inside the catalyst housing or the catalyst is broken or it is clogged so we need to watch out for for these things and then um, when you discover that your engine just are consuming fuel you need to watch out in fact there's something they do in the market now today you know um i saw it recently i think last year I went to the market i want to get a catalyst a used catalyst you know that is still very clean because i'm professional so i know the one that i can use catalysts are very expensive if you are going to get a brand new one they are very 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 expensive so what they do they use what they, they use pop you know <laughs> pop you now design a pop like catalyst you will see yeah. it just like catalyst you just put it there and it will not do anything it will just be there it will reduce the noise but the the work that a three-way catalyst will do it won't do it your engine will still be consuming fuel and every other thing and it, it won't last as long as a normal catalyst will last because of the quality of material used in producing it so we need to be very very careful so whether there is catalyst in the exhaust system or not your catalyst could still be there but it would have damaged got broken got clogged and so on wow that that, that is fantastic <laughs> you know the the pop uh, stuff you spoke about <laughs> the first time i saw it in my life i was i was wondering that how could people go to this level but no that that means the person that is putting the pop does not even know the work that a catalyst is supposed to do or the person just wants to make money and go and that's why i advise uh, people when you want to change the catalyst of your car if you can afford it if you have the money just buy a brand new and that's why it's important to fix your vehicle in a reliable workshop reliable workshop where they, they tell you the a and the a is a and the b is also b so that's very very critical uh, Mr. Morris is asking a question here. He said, if you bought a Tokumbo car, how do you know if the catalyst is intact or not? Yeah, Patrick, can you respond to that? If you just bought a Tokumbo car, how do you know the catalyst is intact or not? Hello, can you hear me? Sir Patrick. Okay, let me just uh, uh, respond to that. The first thing is true physical uh, physical uh, assessment. You can know, you know. Okay. You can know. All right. Okay, okay that's if you just bought a Tokumbo car, how do you know if the catalyst is intact or not? Yeah. Yes. Okay. First and foremost, uh, if you just bought a Tokumbo car, I would advise you, right, to one of the best ways to do it is to actually to go underneath. One of the best ways to see. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. yes. Huh? The internet. Okay. C can I go on? Yeah, please. Go on. Go on. Can I go on? Yes, go on. I think the, the internet is really there's a bit of delay in the in the response. Can I go on? Yeah, we have okay. to wait for all right. So I said um one of the first way to know if you are not a professional is you can um you can ask somebody to somebody that is a trustworthy person 
But what is the best way is to physically look at that housing, whether it has, it has been tampered with. Because in most cases, it is not very easy to loosen it out and tighten it out. So what they, what, what they do, can, can I go ahead? So what, what yeah. they do is that they cut it. They use chisel to chisel it out and break the catalyst down. So that is, so, okay. So, so, uh, uh, okay, okay. But I'm, I, I, can, I can, all right. Okay, okay, I can, I can hear you. So I said one of the best way to, to, to get to know that is, um, you know, you it's physical inspection that's the first thing for somebody that is not a professional physical inspection get somebody that will probably lift the vehicle you know get a lift lift the vehicle then check the exhaust the, the catalyst port if it is true that is there check if it has been tampered with like i said in most cases it is not, it is not very easy to to loosen the bolts you know, so what they do, because they want to make it very fast, they just go underneath, they use chisel to chisel the the the, 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 the catalyst uh, port, then they break out the catalyst and they weld it back. So for one of the first things to know, to do is that, take a look at it to see if they have tampered with it. That's the first thing. Then secondly, um, have it scanned, have it diagnosed. If there's an issue with the catalyst, there's going to be a catalyst trouble code, definitely. Mm. Okay. And um, I think it, you, will hear, you will also notice from the sound of the vehicle, you know, the sound will not be as cool as um, uh, it's uh, it, the sound of the vehicle supposed to be. Yeah. So, Physical assessment, just like uh, Mr. Patrick said, and at the same time, from the sound, you can actually know um, the, uh, that the catalyst has been tampered with. So yes, we, we have... The engine, yeah. When you we read have, the engine, it, it sounds like as if the exhaust is broken or the exhaust is leaking. So if it, is, if it has been tampered with, it makes that loud noise as if the exhaust is leaking. There's a leakage around the exhaust. All right, we also have another question on the screen from one of our Facebook viewers, Mr. Sean Jason. I have a persistence lean code on both banks on Lexus RX 330, 2004, 3.3 liter V6 engine. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, the lean code. Uh, yes. Okay, that should be P0172. That's yeah. lean. Uh, okay. Now for lean codes, right? If it is persistent and you have it on both banks, one of the first things I'll ask you to check is your fuel pump, please, because it's your fuel pump. If it is persistent, check your fuel pump. If it is running lean on both banks, check your fuel pump. Then at the same time, for some vehicle, you know. We've discovered that um, when you service your, when you get your injectors cleaned, serviced, and you replace the plugs, it solves that problem too. You know, sometimes your oxygen sensor too can cause it. Now, when you have codes like this, I will advise that live data be taken. Once live data is done, you know, you 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 see if the 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 um, the the fuel trim. You know, you'll see your fuel trim, your long-term fuel trim and your short-term fuel trim. What you have as a long-term fuel trim, it's going to be permanent. It's going to be permanent for a period. What you have at, as your short-term fuel trim is, a, is, what you are, is what is happening with the engine at that moment. So if it goes away from the, from the tolerance, you know that um, it's either your injectors are bad or maybe your oxygen sensor is bad. But if you have those, um, your fuel trim is okay, and you are still having issues with lean code, I, I will advise you to check your fuel pump pressure. That's the number one culprit. Because what can cause it, the, because what the, the, the um, system lean is just telling you that you don't have enough fuel going into the combustion chamber. Enough fuel is not matching up with the amount of air that is coming into the system to meet up that 14.7 air to one. 
So that is what, what it means. So, but if you are getting it on the both bands, in most cases, I tell you, the fuel pump is always the culprit. But at the same time, you can, from data stream, you'll know if your, your O2 sensors are not performing well, you know, you'll know if they're not performing well. So please look, check, check, um, replace the, probably check the fuel pump pressure. That's uh, what I'm going to advise now. Okay. Um, thank you very much. For vehicles that are, that are now over 10 years, is there any, because like I said the other time, that most manufacturers will tell you that your catalyst should last at least 10 years in your vehicle. Now, what should be uh, the concern of people that drive the vehicle that is over 10 years and the catalyst are still intact? Is this something that they should be considering? changing any time soon and uh, then i also wanted to talk about what could be the impact of bad fuel on the catalyst you understand does it really have uh, an impact you understand if yes do, do, does it mean that uh, there are chances that this can reduce the lifespan of the catalytic converter uh, I, I i wanted to to respond to to that Okay, that's a very um, wonderful question. Firstly, I want to say that if you're driving a vehicle and then um, probably you bought the vehicle as a brand new or foreign used vehicle, and then um, it is up to 10 years, if you are still very comfortable with the vehicle, I have to be very realistic here. If you are still very comfortable with the vehicle, then I can advise you to invest in getting a brand new catalytic converter because you know that will serve you for another 10 years plus again so if you have driven a vehicle up to 10 years or the vehicle is up to 10 years and you are not sure that the cat has been replaced one time um any it's it, it, it has ever been replaced i will advise that you should um start preparing to get another catalytic converter then concerning um, bad fuel, yes, of course, when you have bad fuel, it really affects the combustion, you know? Yes, when you have bad fuel, it affects the combustion. You you, 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 you observe that the burning, um, okay, let's let's take, a bad fuel could be like a fuel that does not have, that has a lower research octane number, you know? If you have a vehicle that, if you are supposed to drive on a premium fuel and you are now driving, on say a 86 RON, eh? that 86 RON will be like, yes, will be like a bad fuel because a fuel that has 86 as its research octane number is a low um, octane level fuel. Then the burning will not be okay if it is used on a vehicle that is meant to use a premium fuel or a high um, um run fuel now the same thing that the body will not it, it won't be okay in fact you have a lot of um, fuel dumping on the cart so one of the things like i said that damages catalyst mostly is still fuel related because i discussed it about um misfiring when a cylinder is misfiring what the brain box does is that the brain box start pumping fuel. Take note, if definitely. What, because what the brain box wants, what the brain, what the brain box to do is that it will start augmenting that signal that is not working by adding more fuel so that the engine can move. So you will find you'll find out that more fuel is coming out through the exhaust. And once you have more fuel going through the exhaust, it damages the 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 uh, catalytic converter. Catalyst. So at the, the same time, you're using bad fuel. When you're using bad fuel, fuel a little of it to get burned, the other ones will just be getting dumped on the catalyst. So it will damage the catalyst. Very, very important. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, this question is um, is not uh, in line with the topic we are handling today, but like we said, that we would like to have as many questions as possible. Mr. Morris is asking here. Mm -hmm. I have always had the seatbelt sign on my dashboard, even when all seatbelts are fully engaged. What's responsible and what is the solution? Okay. Uh, all right. By the buckle, 
you know, that red buckle where you buckle your seat belt, right? That is there is a switch there that is connected to the instrument cluster that is connected to your dashboard. If that switch is bad, right, even when you have buckled the seat belts, eh, it will still create that open circuit. Now, there's a switch there. It is when you buckle the seat belts. By the time you buckle the seat belt, you close the circuit. And when you close the circuit, the light goes off. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, but when you buckle it and there's a problem with that buckle, I'm talking of that, that buckle that, you are, that is tightened to the seats by the side of the seats, mm -hmm. you know, when that buckle is bad, or probably there is an there is an open circuit, maybe one of the wires is cut, or the buckle is not meant for that particular vehicle, you will just find out that even if you buckle it, the seat belt light will still be on. That is just the thing. That's just the, the, the reason. And by that buckle, the buckle itself is a switch. That buckle yeah. is a switch. So if there's a so the buckle is a switch. So when you buckle it. It is it is not closing it's not closing the circuit for that um that light to go off so it shows so where they should look at is just they should look around that buckle they should look around the buckle and trace the wire that goes from that buckle to the instrument cluster that's um, what of the problem yeah I, another thing that um i want to add to that is that if the vehicle has um probably had an accident before um, because the, the the airbag system of a vehicle, the kind of design they now we now have, when you have an accident, your airbag is deployed. You are also expected to change your seat belts. You understand? If you don't change your seat belts, you continually have this uh, this light on it. Depending on the brand and model of the vehicle, we have some vehicles that also have intelligent intelligent battery sensor that are responsible for this, you know, as long as, um, you know, what part of the things intelligent battery sensor does is that in case you have an accident, it deactivates uh, uh, the battery to ensure that uh, it reduces the chances of you experiencing fire in the vehicle. So on this intelligent battery sensor, it has a link, that's a connection to your seat belt also. So if your intelligent battery sensor is also bad, you understand it's part of the cycle circuit so which means that the cycle is not going to be completed and your 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 seat belt light will be on at times it will come up with your airbag light it's a function of the brand and the model of the vehicle you are talking about most of the german brands have always have intelligent battery sensors uh, in their system however you can also have your airbag light on if your seat occupancy sensor is bad, for instance, you sit on the driver's seat and the passenger seat, when nobody is there, for some vehicles, we show you passenger airbag off. You understand? So if your seat occupancy sensor is bad, so that when somebody sits on it, it cannot sense whether anybody is sitting or not. Or probably at the time it went bad, it was sensing that somebody was sitting on it. You understand? By the time you want to drive, your car is on, it will show that light to tell you that somebody is sitting on that passenger seat. The person is not using seat belts. So if your seat occupancy sensor is bad, it can also reveal that. However, it's important that you take your car to a workshop, let them diagnose it, a diagnostic machine that can actually see what is happening with your seat belt. It will point to the right direction. Uh, the, what you need to do. All right, um, Mr. Dikpo Omishore also has a question here. Uh, can you explain what check engine lights on mean? And is this something to worry about? My mechanic told me to disregard that. Disregard that. The engine is okay. Uh, the light has been consistently on. All right. So what, what Mr. Dick was trying to say is that uh, uh, the mechanic has always been telling him to disregard the check engine light that has been coming up consistently on his dashboard. Now, is it something to, to worry about? And uh, I, I know it's, it's going. if we are going to discuss check engine lights today, we spend 
<laughs> Only God knows how many hours, but just uh, advise Mr. Adipo on what you think he should do. Yeah, hello, Mr. Patrick, are you there? Okay, I think <laughs> the internet is at it again. So maybe any anytime you, you you hear me at your head, then yeah, you can answer the question. But while we are waiting, all right, okay, Mr. Yeah. Tipo, what I advise is that firstly, yeah. we get your vehicle scanned. The check any light could come up for a very minor reason, and at the same time, it could come up because of a major problem with your. Yes, I'm here. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear should you. I go on? Yeah, okay, I said that. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I can hear you. I can, I, I, I can hear you. Okay, I can hear you. Can I go on? Yes. Okay. I said that, well, it's not something that you have to lose your sleep over, but um, it calls for a little bit of worry because it is a warning signal it is warning you that there is a problem mm -hmm. yes i said it is not something you have to lose your sleep over but but you have to worry a little bit about it because it is a warning signal it tells you that there is something that is wrong with the engine electronics of the vehicle like i said earlier as little as most things you need to do have it scanned let them narrow down troubleshoot narrow down the fault and get the problem solved now let's telling you that you should not bother about it is not is not right please you need to drive a vehicle that the warning lights are working effectively when you turn on your ignition the light comes on when the engine is on the light goes off so if there is any fault it triggers the light again to warn you that oh there is a problem with your engine so get the vehicle get it scanned and try and narrow down again it could be as it could be just it could just be okay um i think mr patrick internet has finally taking him off the studio yeah, just like you said, the first thing you do when you see anyone inside on your dashboard is to go to your workshop for proper diagnosis is important. So I noticed that a lot of people, like they do self medication to themselves. They just want somebody to tell them that, okay, your car is okay, you can go ahead. But there are several reasons why your check engine lights could be on. So it's critical that you go to the workshop and get your vehicle scanned and, um, the fourth code will now determine uh, how the um, diagnosis will go. Yeah, we have been hit of the studio as a result of uh, a poor internet signal. And since the government is going to is relaxing the lockdown tomorrow, hopefully we will be able to use our uh, studio in the office where we will be able to transmit to you. Thanks uh, for us on, on our programs. Please, I want to advise you to join us and follow all our social media handles on Twitter, on uh, Instagram. Uh, I'm showing the uh, Instagram, Facebook, and also join us on uh, YouTube. You understand? Our YouTube channel is there. Beyond what we're doing here, you'll be seeing some other informative programs uh, on our YouTube channel that can tell you is beyond the technical things we are discussing here, what are the opportunities are in the automotive industry, especially in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa and Africa as a whole. 
the you, you see documentaries about um people that are even laying their hands on or trying things out as far as manufacturing and uh, assembly of vehicles is concerned some documentaries that that will let you know that okay we are trying to do something in africa also and uh, make sure that we put our vision and um, on automotive engineering you can actually sit down in your house and log into our portal and learn how to repair how to diagnose vehicle diagnose vehicles and so on and so forth and after the lockdown you can come into our training school for your practicals and and we we have uh, a track record that 100 percent of people that we are talking now they are fully employed so it tells you that the quality of what we are training them we, we don't really train you the basic things that people know we, we turn you to a guru turn you to a world-class professional that can function in any company we expose you to how to use electronic part catalog for different brands of vehicles we, we, we teach you the business parts of the automotive uh, uh, business websites and and uh, back uh time is fast but can, can you just say uh all right um thanks um, for joining us in this uh, broadcast and then um, we see you next week bye